I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Last night, I'm sure a lot of you saw Jimmy Page induct Link Ray into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and perform the classic song that inspired so many guitarists around the world, Rumble. Well, a few months ago, we had a chance to talk to Link Ray's eldest daughter, Beth Ray Webb, who talks glowingly about growing up with her dad and how his influence in music and as a father really changed her life. Here's our sit down with Beth talking about the late, great Link Ray on Rock History Book. We're here. It's all good. Nice to see your face. Hi. Hi. How you doing? What a nice occasion, huh? What what a beautiful thing that's happening. But when he got in, like when he got in. Oh, my. Uh, oh John, we let me tell you, I got to tell you this. Can you see the background here? Yeah. Yeah. You see what's behind me here? Look I at didn't... my look at the posters. Oh, look at that, eh? And you're carrying, you know, it's nice that you're carrying the torch and, and uh, I mean, who better than you? You're oh, his eldest bless child, you. right? Huh? You're I'm sorry. Eldest, you're his eldest child. Yes. Right? Let me turn this fan on. Yes. Yes, I am. Um, I'm the oldest. I'm his firstborn. I'm the administrator of the estate, and, but I'm doing it because I love my dad, you know, <laughs> and I, I know we were in Dunn. Did you see the pictures of the mural in Dunn, the mural? Oh, man. Are you friends with me on Facebook? I don't know. Uh, we can be now. Okay, because I got pictures. What it was, Dunn, that's where he was from. Very proud to be from Dunn. And they did a mural. It's this guy, his name is Scott. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but anyway, he's going, he's with the National Arts of Music through, and he's going through North Carolina and he's taking each city and um, he's painting murals in their city. Well, I seen um, my daughter-in-law's mother and I went to Black Mountain, I mean, went to Cherokee and we were talking about Black Mountain. I said, I've never stopped there. I parked the car and get out, and there's Roberta Platt. I said, oh, my gracious. But Sonia Flowers was trying to get the marker in Fredericksburg, right? So I sent her the pictures of Roberta Flat in the mural. It was so awesome. Didn't have a clue. Didn't have a clue. That Sonia's was great. Sonia is great. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. I love her to death. I really do. Well, and um, how she we met was... I was laid up. Um, I broke my foot. I had an accident. I walked with a cane. In 99, I, I crushed my ankle, and I had a plate and seven screws. And then um, I got sick, and I broke my foot, same foot, same ankle, on the same side. And she called me after she saw the documentary, which is behind me right here. And um, she says, Beth, why hasn't Fredericksburg done anything for your dad? And I said, that's a good question. So that's how we met. <laughs> I was going back and forth with her trying to get that marker in um, Fredericksburg. So a lot of people will come up to you and say, that's, he's your dad? You, you yeah. got the one, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. And then I'll say, well, you do look like him. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. But it's my honor. It is my honor to meet you and talk to you. I just, I'm just so, I'm on, I'm on cloud nine and above and eight coming down. <laughs> so are, are, so are you with the family going to the Rock and Roll of Fame? I hope so. I yeah. hope so. We're trying to get it all situated. Stevie Sellis and Ellen Bello and hopefully Stevie Van Zandt, which I'm sure he will. They'll, you know, cause I called him, I said, help. I don't know. I don't know anything about that, but um, yeah, I'm hoping so. When you read things like Pete Townsend saying, I wouldn't have played guitar if it wasn't for Rumble. Yeah, isn't that awesome? That is awesome, yeah. <laughs> like the tra tra trajectory of rock and roll was changed by your dad. It just I, was, it's not arguable. Yeah, well, he, yeah, he kept me from the music. And he told my brothers and all, he says, when the time comes, your sister will step up to the plate. I said, you think, you know, because I didn't, but I do it because I love him, you know, and he deserves the recognition that he deserves. 
And I'm glad he's finally starting to get it. And everybody, fans, everybody has been on this journey with me. I couldn't have done it without him, you know. And I thank God every day for him, you know. How well did you know your dad? Oh, I was close to dad. Yeah. yeah. I was with, I mean, he stayed, when I say stay in my life more, when he went overseas, we went and we got to see him one time, you know, Chris was 17, my youngest son. My oldest son wasn't able to go, and uh, his name is little Tommy. And, um, but yeah, he, he's been in my life all my life, except for that period, you know. As uh, it's it's something that I, I ask a lot of people that I talk to, like I'll talk to, you know, my friend just the other day had a pleasure of talking to Paul Simon. And he said, Art Garfunkel is, and, and Paul just, well, who, to you, who, who, who was your dad? How would you describe your dad? A loving father. Um, I remember sitting in his lap watching TV, him teaching me, you know, the Jiffy Pop with aluminum pool, he'd stand me in the chair, you know, and help me. I mean, he was a father to me, you know, and um, of course, I remember him when he was um, writing Run Chicken Run, and um, and I was telling my sons, I said, you know how your granddaddy got that sound? And they'd say, yeah, mom, and they do it, and I says, nope. And uh, I said, yes, it is. I says, nope. And when I told him what he'd done, to get that sound, they says, oh, wow, you're right. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I was there when he was writing songs when we lived in D.C. And, you know, I remember when they wanted to put Jack the Ripper, they wanted to put an orchestra behind Jack the Ripper. And he was so mad. He, he says, it's my effing song, it's my creation, and I am not having um they're not going to tell me what how to create my song and play my song and i think he was with effort when that happened and that's when he left effort too <laughs> how old were you the first time if you can remember someone coming up to you and saying the old he's your dad um about fifth grade fifth grade um because um my music teacher knew of my dad and we would have, um, back then, you know, they'd have shit talent, show and tell. And I'd always take dad's albums to school, right? And um, when, as the kids learned who he was, every time he'd come in town, all the kids would come see him. You know? <laughs> and uh, Lucky 757, the guitar player was, son is blind, but he's got a voice on They're really good. And... Um, my friend Carol, that we grew up since we were nine years old, her and Kathy and all of us, and Carol, Kathy, um, Carol says, do you know who Dan is? And I said, yeah, he's a big fan of Dad's. He's a guitar player. She started laughing. She said, Beth, we grew up together. And I told Dan, I says, if I known you were a big fan of Dad's, I would have introduced you in his mouth about drunk. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, all the kids, every time he come get me and my brother Link, the oldest son, Link the third, for the summer when the kids would come, you know, he was playing um what it was called, Disco Disco Ten. Um, is when he came out with Batman. And we were when they were recording that, we were standing behind the cameras. And my girlfriend Kathy got to go with me. And she thought that was the coolest thing. <laughs> oh my God. Well, what's yeah. it like being the when you know when you're handing my wife's in that position. Her parents are still around, but she's going to be in that position as far as handling things. Right. Like in a state. I mean, it's like juggling cats with something. But some families are just, they're just, uh, you guys are all good? Yeah. 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 There's it's eight good. of us and we all get along good. Yeah. That says something. Yes. That's what everybody says. That's what, but every time one of them was born, dad was a, okay, you're the oldest. Be sure to look after your brother, your sister, or, you know, whatever. And um, I thought he meant because I was the oldest, you know, when he was telling me this. I didn't have no idea it was, but it's my honor. I'd rather do it. How did you, uh, and it's it's not just for you. It's a question I ask a lot of people because, what you know, I'm 63. Most of the people I interview, the old classic rockers, because that's what our channel is. 
it's all classic rock interviews. They all have at least ten years on me, and most of them have lost a lot of uh, uh, bandmates. But how did you how did you deal with your dad's loss? How did you deal with it? Um, I wasn't able to be with my dad when he passed. We he was he passed in November of '05 on the fifth. I didn't know until Thanksgiving Eve that same year that he had passed. And my husband, God rest his soul, um, he said I mourned heavily for eight years. And still, I still have my moments because I'm missing him. I mean, I was close to my dad, really close to my dad. Yeah, it's so. Uh, well, his footprint was larger than life. It really, I mean, sonically, it certainly was, right? I mean, Rumble. He, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. But he wouldn't, all this is going on. He would be so honored and so humbled. He wouldn't run, he wouldn't think it was happening to him, in other words. He didn't look at himself. He wasn't the type of person he knew. I mean, when Joe Walsh of the Eagles said that Link Ray should have been one of the first ones in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, when they um, inter interviewed him, I think it was, what, 2019? And I said, wow, dad wasn't the type of person. I mean, he'd come, when he'd come see us after I got married, he'd tell me and my husband some stories and we'd sit there and crack up. I mean, dad, it was a great, he could really get you look going. And my husband, his um, father um, played with the Carter family because they're from the mountains, yeah. So music was on both sides, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, there was just... He was <laughs> my father. I love watching him play the guitar, you know, and I watch my sons play the guitar. I don't play. I tell everybody, Daddy told me I was dancing before I was walking, so that's it went through me to my kids. What do you think he'd be, he'd still be doing music, right? Who, my dad? Yeah, if he's still around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. He, that was his calling, you know. He, uh, he had, only had one lung. Um, you know, he was in the Korean War and um, he almost died at the Korean War and they got him into Seoul at the hospital. And they took his lung out and I just found out in detail just the other night how that went down. And I'm 68 years old and that was the first time I've ever heard. You look That's, good. Well, thank you, sir. I you appreciate look, it. You look really good for you. You're doing thank something you. right. <laughs> it's in the genes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, I really hope you guys could can can make it. I mean, the the. Uh, oh, I'll be there. I'll be there. Good. Trust me. Yeah. Well, you, is there any favorite stories you'd like to share about your dad? Well, um, like I said, I remember watching John Wayne. I remember watching The Long Ranger, Raw High, all the cowboy movies, and what Dad would do, he would pop popcorn, and we would sit there. And, um, you know, and now, you know, he crossed his legs, like, you know, his ankle over his knee. And I was sitting in his lap and hang, dangle my feet <laughs> over his leg and sit there. And um, he would read the Bible to me until I fell asleep at night. And um, when I got a little bit older, back then, it's funny now, I was afraid of Frankenstein. Well, my cousin Vern, he lived downstairs, but he stayed upstairs with us most of the time. He was like an older brother to me. And uh, he come up and we watched Frankenstein, right? He ended up having to really sit there with me until I went to sleep because it scared me so bad <laughs> because he was so tall, you know. But I remember Jimmy Dean coming to the house. I thought dad was tall. And he had to duck to get into the door. And I remember just, I was telling my friends, I said, I said, I thought daddy was tall when I was little. And I said, but when he picked me up, I could touch the ceiling. And I thought that was so cool. <laughs> oh my God, that's yeah. that cool. A lot of people know that dad played at Hank Williams Sr.'s funeral. And, um, you know, now, I mean, dad was just a humble guy. He just... Didn't know a stranger. I used to tell everybody, I said, um, that's the type of person he would literally take the shirt off his back and give it to you. Well, after he passed, somebody sent me a video. 
He was on stage, and the guy wanted his shirt. He literally, t- I said, see, I told you. <laughs> he took it right off and gave it to him. <laughs> I was reading the thing on the, the fact that uh, uh, running away from the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. A life full of adventure. Yeah, yeah. Got a lot of history in our in, um, in our family. We yeah. really do. A lot of people I talk to wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't for that. I'm overstating the obvious, but it's true. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like I said, if it wasn't for his fans and everybody in line, Stevie Van Zandt, Stevie Sellers, you know, Catherine and Resolution Pictures for the documentary. I mean, Chesapeake Library held an event here. And that's where this poster over here, you can see the poster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, they won an award because they had an event and everything, and they got permission to show the documentary. And Chris played. Little Tommy couldn't come up because he lives in Florida, so it's kind of hard, you know. Mm-hmm. A working man, you know how that goes. So <laughs> I'm very proud of both of them. I'm sure you are, and the fact that people remember, they they know, you know. Yes. That, that's one thing about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame I really love. Is, is a lot of people are getting the recognition they deserve. And it says yeah. something to be in a rock and roll hall of fame. It still means oh. It. oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And we went when they in and um ducked Rumble into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's when I was laid up with my broken foot. So I called and asked them if I could come, you know, if they'd show me around. And um my my brother Link the third next to me. And Sonia and Carol went with me. And we just made a mini trip out of it. And um, they treat us like VIP. They were so good to us. And I got to meet Robert Durrell Durrell and um, Ken Amblett from Metallica. Because Robert was in the documentary. And I asked Greg if he would introduce me to him so I could thank him, you know, for being in the documentary. So I got to meet them, had some pictures taken, and um, super nice people. Everybody's been so good to me, everybody. Yeah. From the time he was, I mean, when he was inducted into the Native American Music Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he got a lifetime achievement award for First Americans in the Arts. You know, and it's just been one thing after another, Southern Legends. Him and Conway were inducted into that same town. Got to meet his son, my husband, and I. Mm-hmm. Seems just like his dad. <laughs> Everything's interconnected. Everything you know, you always yeah. look, you meet the other siblings. You meet the other, the, uh, other uh, children of this guy or that person. You start realizing, right. that, you know what? You're all on the same team. There you go. Met Wanda Jackson there, oh. Bill Sullivan, and Ricky Madlock. I met him. Um, because me and Chris presented the war. And when he told somebody told him who I was, and he came over and hugged me and said he was sorry, hear about dad. Everybody said they loved him to death. Everybody out from that. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of good energy there, man. Oh yeah. There is. Oh yeah. Okay. Let me know. I'll be glad to talk to you anytime. Okay. Take good care of yourself. Thanks. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs>